The infographic we see in front of us shows the effect on profits of innovative companies in the Qinhai region as they receive more capital, as they engage in more R&D spending, and as policies which affect their profitability change. And what we see is that endowing these companies with more capital would have the lowest impact on profitability. We see that large regulatory reform would have the greatest impact on profits. And we see that administrative changes such as those we proposed would have the largest impact on these companies' profits. Thus, our model clearly shows that Chen Hai's plans need to focus on soft infrastructure, such as the regulations governing these innovative companies, instead of building out urban infrastructure. Looking first at the short-term impact on profits, we see that our regulatory reforms would have the biggest effect on R&D spending. These reforms would thus clearly incentivize companies to engage in more R&D spending because they know that higher levels of R&D spending would translate into more investment and thus more profits. In terms of impacts on these profits, we see that privatizing the Chen High Authority and adopting certain parts of Hong Kong law would generate the largest impacts on profits out of equilibrium. Or in other words, they would give the largest growth boost to these companies before looking at the way they increase these companies' long-term profitability potential. And what we see is that the application of a very simple idea to Chen Hai, increasing the profit incentive of these companies. We see naturally that there is some optimal level of legal reform, particularly when looking at Chen Hai's out of equilibrium profits or looking at the short term push in these companies' profitability. We see that large scale legal reform would cause a certain amount of disorganization and a certain amount of disruption, which might eat into the profitability of such R&D spending. Yet, even in this case, we see that these large-scale reforms would increase the returns to other types of spending, such as investments in intangibles, where more R&D spending can't produce any more profits. Thus, regulatory reform can help these companies squeeze more profits out of their operations, even when the productivity of their R&D spending has been maxed out. Along similar lines, we see that medium levels of regulatory reform would tend to maximize these profits over time. The infographic we see in front of us shows the change in Chen Hai companies expected out of equilibrium profits for various levels of regulatory reform. Indeed, if Chen Hai proceeds as it's currently designed, we would expect to see an increase in profits. Yet, even for small levels of reform, we would expect to see a very large jump in the profitability of these innovative and logistics companies. Large-scale reform would lead to more profits, but it's medium levels of reform that would correlate with the largest amount of profitability. We will see in a moment how large-scale reform might jeopardize current profitability, yet help to maximize future profitability. Thus, the red line we see in front of us might represent a more accurate path for such changes in profits as Chen Hai adopts various regulatory reforms. Yet, regardless of the level of reform, we see that any reform at all can generate enough benefits in order to pay off any political costs incurred, as politicians and policymakers incur the wrath of certain segments of the population. We see that the Chen Hai project, particularly with regulatory reform, could generate the resources needed to promote sustainable acceptance of such reforms. The equilibrium level of profits follows a similar trend. In the previous infographics, we looked at that short-term or temporary bump in profitability from regulatory reform. In this infographic, we look at the effect that these reforms will have on the longer-term trend in profitability. Economists refer to this level as the equilibrium level of profitability. Namely, we want to know how profits in these companies would change when no other policy reforms or changes are occurring. And what we see again is that equilibrium profits 
reach their highest for medium levels of regulatory reform, we see that all of these companies would use less R&D resources as Shanghai or Shenzhen and Hong Kong engage in such regulatory reform. And we see that regulatory reform would make these companies more efficient. Namely, they would require less cash, less investment, in order to generate the profits coming out of Shanghai. As in the previous case, we see that regulatory reform increases the profitability of other types of expenditure beside R&D spending. This infographic shows the effect of other spending on profits for companies likely to locate in Shanghai. And we see that as such spending increases geometrically, the impact that R&D has on profits increases by orders of magnitude. We see that even before any kind of reform, simply pushing more resources into Shanghai's companies would certainly increase profits. This infographic shows the way that such other spending impacts on the relationship between R&D spending and profitability. Namely, as Shanghai's companies engage in other types of spending, this naturally would complement R&D spending. In other words, these companies would get more out of their R&D buck as they engage in other types of spending, yet as we've shown, these companies should promote structural reform instead of making these very costly investments. The infographic we see in front of us illustrates the reason why relatively small changes in regulatory policies and similarly relatively small changes in R&D spending and investment potentially translate into relatively large changes in profits. In our model, it's the feedback loop between cash investment, R&D spending, and profits which generates changes in profitability. As companies grow out other types of spending, they should expect to see profits increase proportionally because this increase in profits then generates cash which they use to generate more profits as well as engage in more research and development. Figure 60 represents one of the key figures from our paper. In this figure, we show profitability under a range of scenario. We show profits in Hong Kong and Shanghai's innovative sectors if these jurisdictions continue to operate separately. We show the effect of Shanghai on equilibrium profits, and we also show the effect on the optimal level of profits, or the highest level of profits that these companies can generate. And what we see is that there's a divergence or a difference between equilibrium profits and optimal profits. In other words, as Shanghai is currently designed, profits will not settle into their optimum. The equilibrium level of profits, that level where profitability has no incentive to change, lies far lower than the level which maximizes shareholder value. Figure 62, for its part, shows the effect of regulatory reform on this difference. If small amounts of regulatory reform decrease the gap between equilibrium profits and optimal profits, large regulatory reform almost obliterates this difference. In theory, the only way that these companies can achieve their optimum is through the Chen Hai Authority investing resources into these companies such that they achieve their optimal amount of profits even though this level's too high to sustain in the longer term. As regulatory reform occurs and as equilibrium profits tend toward the optimal profit levels, we would thus expect to see spending by the Chen Hai Authority fall. In this series of figures, we look at the effect on optimal levels of profits, R&D spending, and cash as Shanghai engages in reform. Without any reform, the optimal level of profits, the optimal level of R&D spending, and the optimal amount of cash and investment these companies should have lying around increases as these firms engage in other types of spending, However, the extent of this increase simply follows past trends. We would not expect Shanghai to become a rival to Silicon Valley or other innovation centers.
as Chen Hai engages in limited legal and regulatory reform, we see an interesting thing happen in the relationship between optimal profits, R&D spending, and cash. We see that the optimal amount of cash these companies need to employ increases dramatically. We see the optimal level of profits fall significantly, in part because we see that the amount of R&D spending that these companies need to engage in increases exponentially. Thus, by only engaging in limited reform, we see that these companies have to plow in a large amount of other resources and engage in large amounts of R&D spending in order to grow the level of their optimal profits. Yet, such reform would probably maximize Hong Kong and Shenzhen's position as a financial center, as such reforms would maximize the amount of cash that these companies need to attract. As Chen Hai engages in extensive regulatory reform, we see that the amount of cash these companies require falls, as does the magnitude of R&D spending, and we see greater sensitivity of optimal profits to other types of spending. Thus, we can expect even smaller companies engaging in innovation would benefit without taking away the benefits of growing the region as an international financial center. Thus, we see if the current trajectory focuses on limited growth in profit, regulatory reform encourages investors to plow cash in, which not only grows the region's profits, but also increases assets in the region, deepening Chen Hai's and Hong Kong's position as an international financial center. Similarly, we see an increase in optimal profits and optimal levels of cash investment, and we see that optimal levels of R&D increase relatively slowly. This suggests that these companies become far more efficient at using research and development resources in order to generate cash and profits. We see, unsurprisingly, that cash investment in these companies declines as they engage in other types of spending, we see that other types of spending not only increase optimal profits, but also increases optimal levels of R&D. Thus, counterintuitively, we see that increased levels of other spending increases optimal levels of R&D. Namely, the region would become more efficient at using research and development, converting this spending into profits without a lot of external intervention. Naturally, these figures are subject to argument and interpretation, as we could only use balance sheet data in order to estimate the effects of R&D spending on profits and vice versa. Yet, we see the effect of reform most starkly over time. Figure 65 shows the effect of regulatory reform on profits, R&D spending, and cash the effects over 10 period horizon, where we don't say years because the model looks at time periods, and such time periods rely on investment and the speed of reform. And what we see is that even though optimal levels of R&D spending fall, these reforms incentivize large bursts in R&D spending, particularly in the later years. We see that these changes reverberate strongly into the future, making Chen Hai's prospects as an international financial center the largest in this 10-period horizon. We see that profits in the region would increase by roughly a factor of 10, assuming Chen Hai ad adopts the strongest form of the regulatory reforms we propose. Yet, we see that these reforms would make Chen Hai a veritable center for research and development. Thus, in this paper, we've only cared about profits because profits are the ultimate measure of the success of innovation policy. And what we've seen is that by adopting such regulatory reforms, Chen Hai can produce the profits that policymakers and local companies alike desire.